people. Okay, let me let uh, Anita in. Okay. Anyway, we we're talking about Isaiah 53. Uh, of course, Isaiah 53, uh, incredible, you know, scripture. But um, you know, in that first, in that first part of Isaiah, it says that um, we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. <laughs> And bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes were healed. So we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God, which shows you right there that if we think God was the one striking and beating up Jesus to relieve himself of some kind of anger, then that's the carnal, a complete carnal uh, perspective co coming out of the carnal mind. But also Isaiah 10, uh, 53 10. They always, they always go to this one that this says, uh, yeah, but it says, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. And so that's the scripture <clears throat> that they camp on and saying, see, it was God. It's almost like they're saying that God was in the Roman soldier. If you've seen the movie, The Passion, you know, where the Roman soldier is beating Jesus. It almost implies that God was in the Roman soldier, you know, relieving his anger by beating Jesus. You know, when the scripture says God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. But that's the scripture we're talking about. It, it almost looks on the surface like God was beating Jesus. But, but we point out like in Genesis 3, we know who bruised who brew, who was doing the bruising was the, was Satan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the, really, the Roman the Roman soldier was really filled with a demonic spirit. Absolutely. And uh, then mean, we you know, the scripture says every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights. You know, right. every good thing there, and there's not a shadow of turning in him. My mm. goodness. Listen, you know, when people say these things, it just really ticks me off. Because you know what? If, if an yeah. earthly father was to beat his earthly son, you'd call the cops and say, this man is abusing his child. And yet they accuse God of that. Oh, and they accuse God of even worse. Oh. Because, and we can see that, and it's being exposed, but a lot of this twisted theology that has come out, born out of the, the carnal mind, yes, is being exposed, and um, it's being rooted up, it's being plucked up, and it's being thrown down. Absolutely. And listen, the Lord brings it to my heart to preach it, I'm going to preach it. I'm not going to look at their faces. I'm going to preach it, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it needs to be thrown down. Anything that's not of God needs to be cast down. But we're looking at that Isaiah 53, 10. And I want to mention that, that in the Hebrew, what did you say about the past? Yes, R.C. Sproul brought out the fact that in the Hebrew language, there is no passive verb, only causative. So whenever you see God did this or God did that, there mm -hmm. was no verb to say God allowed this to happen, but caused it to happen. Right. And then again, in, um, I mean, it's huge. And in, in Genesis 3, 15, he says, uh, God says a promise. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Talking about the serpent is exactly. the one bruising the heel of Jesus or right. doing the, the cruci crucifying and the whipping. But what pleased God was he knew the outcome. He knew that yeah. that body of Jesus was pre pre prepared to take away the first and establish the second. So that's what pleased God. And, you know, Jesus said, the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So who's the thief? Who's the, who's the robber, the killer? It's not God. It's the enemy. Exactly. 
So anyway, I want to bring that out because that's huge at that Isaiah 53.10. You know, that's really the scripture they use, one of them, to, to justify that somehow it's really, and it's really from a foundation of not seeing God for who he is. Yeah. And God is love. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There's no shadow of turning. God was not, God wasn't just so enraged with our bad behavior that he had to see blood in order to relieve him from his anger so that he wouldn't have to punish us. Right. I mean, when you think about that, just think about that for a second, just like Beulah said, you know, even on human terms. I mean, that is just craziness. Yeah. It's craziness. We believed a lot of twisted, crazy. I say the carnal mind is cray cray. It'll drive you crazy. It'll 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 cause so much confusion in the hearts of men. Absolutely. I wonder if they're having a hard time receiving the love of the Father. And you know exactly. And you know this is why they are so cruel. <laughs> oh no. You know, I mean, legalists are cruel in that you see they emulate the one they worship mm -hmm. and if the one they worship was cruel then that's just going to be the fruit that they're going to manifest exactly that's why the pharisees were so mean they were just absolutely mean yeah they were manifesting the god they believed absolutely amen <laughs> you know, I was reading something by A.B. Simpson this morning. And, uh, you know, in um, Galatians 5, where it says, uh, let me turn there, the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know, A.B. Simpson said, there should have been a colon after the word love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the rest of it is all a manifestation of love. Amen. And he said this, he said, each of the fruit of the spirit is but a phase <coughs> of love. Joy is love exalting. Peace is love reposing. Mm -hmm. Patience is love enduring. Goodness is all the good manners of love. Kindness is love in action. Faithfulness is love confiding. Gentleness is love yielding. And self-control is true self-love. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. Self-control is true self-government. Mm, mm, yeah. You know, he, the proverb says, he that controls his own spirit is, I think he says he's stronger than a man, um, stronger than an armed city. Mm. Listen. If, if we can't govern our own soul through the power of the Holy Spirit, how do we expect to do anything else? It's got to start here. Right. Right. And there's a difference between that, uh, and it may say it right here, self-discipline and self-control. Exactly. Right. One yeah. is the flesh and the other is a fruit. One is the flesh and one is the fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, if we, if, if a person cannot control their own emotions through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, we're in no condition to be teaching anybody else. What does the scripture say about uh, he that's overtaken in a fault? Let him that is spiritual mm -hmm. in the spirit of meekness go to that one. You know, you got to be walking in the truth of who you are in order to help somebody who's fallen into the net of not knowing who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then they say, and consider yourself. Unless consider you have to be yourself, I, I never, I never thought of that, but 
uh, just thinking, you know, considering you need to con continually consider who you are, who you are. Absolutely. And, and, you know? and, and consider yourself is real it, in the spirit of humility. Mm -hmm. You got to know where you're, you you got to know what your source is. Exactly. Yeah. Because if, if you go with a high-minded attitude of mm -hmm. I'm better than you, you've already fallen into the trap. Right. Yeah. Well, you see your, your belief system is already off. You it's know, corrupted. Because you're, now you're walking in a self-righteous, pharisaical attitude of Absolutely. I'm glad I'm not like the others. I, and you know what that person's going to do? <laughs> That person, because that person doesn't know who they are, they, they're blind. Mm -hmm. They're going to turn around and point to the man's faults. And in actuality, um, be mm -hmm. on the side of Satan, mm -hmm. condemning, rather than lifting them up out of the miry clay and mm -hmm. say, my brother, don't you know who you are? Don't you know the father loves you and that you're perfect in his sight? You're not going to go with that message if you think that you're better than that guy. Right, right. That, that is in Galatians 6, Beulah. <clears throat> Galatians 6. Right, the whole thing. Mm. Where are you reading? Galatians 6, 1. Brethren, if a man be overtake, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was referring to Timothy. Okay. Yeah, because that goes right along with uh, 2 Timothy 2, 24, where it says the servant of the Lord must not strive. That means you, you can't be quarrelsome. But be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience in meekness, mm -hmm. instructing those who oppose themselves. Oppose themselves. If peradventure, God will give them repentance, a change of mind mm -hmm. to the acknowledging of the truth. What is the acknowledging yeah. of the truth? Acknowledging who they are in Christ. Yeah, and the finished work. Of Christ. Yes. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil mm -hmm. who has taken cap who are taken captive by him mm -hmm. at his will. Right. I mean, good night, nurse. You know what? Mother, <laughs> may I? May I? May I just bring you into the snare? No, you may not. And unless you keep yourself reminded of who you are, you know, I love that proverb yeah. that says that the hunter mm -hmm. lays a snare mm -hmm. uh, for no avail if he does it in the sight of any bird. Mm. I mean, listen. The guy that is hunting birds, yeah. if I'm a bird in the tree and I'm watching him lay a net and put leaves <laughs> over it. You're gonna jump I mean, in. I've gotta have no brain to go and jump in that thing, but it's for the unsuspecting. Yeah. And, and Paul said, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. Well, yeah. Paul could say that. Paul could say that, yeah. Paul could say that. But let me tell you something. If you don't keep your nose in it, if you don't keep listening and hearing and hearing and hearing. Where does your discernment come from in your vision and your sight? It comes exactly. From, it comes you from the Lord. like you the know? bird that is around the corner that didn't see squat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, a lot of it has to do with what you're feeding on, what you're looking at, what you're thinking about, you know? Oh, Yeah. Like we said, so and said, I think it was Phil that said, eat carrots for physical eyesight. Yes, he did. Eat the bread yeah. of life for spiritual eyesight. So people that aren't eating the, the, the you know, and, it, and it's not a legalistic doing thing. We're talking about where you set your mind, you know, 
where you set your mind to. You I mean, know? listen, um, is it legalistic to say, you know something, if you feel a little weak, you should eat something? Right. Well, I said, you know, once a week makes one week. <laughs> you know? If someone just comes for Sunday, a Sunday brunch, you know, or eats once a week. And a lot of them, honestly, I think, and I'm not, you know, a lot of them, that's all they do. What, whatever they get on Sunday morning or whatever. And that's their meal for the week. Yeah. And, that, and they're expecting not to see the trap laid before. Absolutely. And, you know, you notice that the people that are feeding on the word continuously, they're always living a victorious life. Even if they're going through contradictory circumstances, mm -hmm. they praise God in the midst of it because they know that, you know, many are the afflictions of the righteous, right. but God shall deliver them out of them all. Right. So, you know, you might be going through a dark spell, okay? But there's light at the end of the tunnel. He always brings us through. Amen. Yes. This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. But a person that is blinded, right? You know, John said he that hates his brother is blind mm -hmm. and he cannot see afar off. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I mean, you know. It's like I was listening to somebody the other day, and uh, they were they're a a a person on um, radio and TV, mm -hmm. and they're a Christian, but they are you know uh, they have a political view, mm -hmm. and he allowed what the the people the opposition is doing to get him angry mm -hmm. and anger had entered into his heart yeah and he was spewing mm. hatred and i'm like i'm thinking brother brother you 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 knocked off the track return mm. return to your love you know yeah and it's like you you got to be able to be able to keep your head about you yeah when everybody else is losing theirs. You know what I mean? I love Kipling's if, you know? If mm -hmm. you can keep your head about you when all men speak evil of you, okay? Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. listen, just because people speak evil of me, I'm not gonna agree with them. You know what I mean? Well, but, yeah. yeah. I, I was reading, it goes back to what I said Sunday about in Corinthians where, he, where Paul says, uh, it, it's a very small thing for me to be judged by you. Yeah. See, Paul had to mature into that place. That's right. And he says, he and I, the judgment of men is very small. It's, and he says, I don't know of anything, you know, wrong in me, but I'm not hereby justified. I'm not justified because I don't see anything wrong in me. Right. I'm justified because of what Christ did for me. Exactly. Exactly. And as I said on, on Sunday, when you were talking about self-condemnation, mm -hmm. you know, self-condemnation is the sister of self-righteousness. Yeah. It's the flip side. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. when you feel good. It's like uh, yeah. the little girl that had a curl right in the middle of her forehead. Oh, <laughs> when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. And that's the Pharisee. You know, when you're the, 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 um, the side of doing what it's eating from the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. <clears throat> and both sides of it are evil because if you do good, you become proud and look down your nose at your brother. Right. If you do bad, then you fall into self condemnation. But either one is the pit. Well, it's like the prodigal son and the elder brother again. The, the, the prodigal son says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son because of look what I've done. You know, look what I've done. And on the other side of that coin, the elder brother yeah. says, I'm more worthy to be called your son. Look what I've done. 
you know, but it's from the same, it's, it has nothing to do with either one of them, what they've done or not done. It, it was exactly. about what God's love for them and what Christ has already done for us. And so. don't you find, don't you think that the whole world is pictured in those two sons? Yes. Mm -hmm. Either you've gone away and run a mark and yep. come back. Yep. Or yeah. always been there. And yeah. the good. That's the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, right there. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That parable is pretty amazing. You know? Yes, it is. And Jan brought out Galatians 6, which goes along with that scripture in 2 Timothy. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, and that overtaken in a fault is a side slip or a deviation or a lapse yeah ye which are spiritual what is spiritual spiritual is just to walk in the truth of who you really are Amen. Right. Yeah. restore such a one yeah. in the spirit of meekness considering yourself you see that in the spirit of meekness the spirit of meekness is there but for the grace of God goes I. My dad used to say that all the time when I was a kid. He'd see a drunken on the street falling all over the place and he goes, there but for the grace of God goes mm -hmm. I. It says, lest thou also be tempted. <clears throat> yeah. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, and that deviate from the truth. I like that. But, uh, and that's what happens. You begin, you deviate from the truth and it's going to begin to manifest. Yeah. In your life, you know. And um, so that's what it's all about. It comes back to identity. You're, you're deviating from the truth of who God says you are. That's and, right. And that's really what it means to walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh. You know, if you're walking in the flesh, <clears throat> <clears throat> then you have forgotten that your sins have been forgiven and that you are not who you should be. And you're, yeah. you're again, you're walking after that self righteous, trying to make it happen. And uh, the only fruit that you're going to see from that is the fruit of condemnation. <laughs> and it yeah. puts you on this vicious cycle yeah. of trying, failing condemnation back to trying hard again. Yeah. <clears throat> so, You know, the, I shared this on, uh, with you on uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. I love that scripture in Romans 4.25 in the Young's where it says, speaking of Jesus, the, the King James says, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And we know that word justification is to be declared righteous, mm -hmm. okay? And so, but that word for is a causative word. It's causative. And in, in Young's, it says, he was delivered because yes. of our offenses. Mm -hmm. Now we know Jesus wasn't mm -hmm. delivered up for his own offenses, he ain't got none. Right. He was delivered up because of our offenses. Mm. But the same word is true for his resurrection. Mm. And he was raised again because of our justification. He mm. was raised again because we were declared righteous. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to see that when Jesus died, he died a sin. He became sin who knew no sin. Okay? Mm -hmm. If he weren't sin, he couldn't have died. Amen. But, okay, so he died a sin, but God did something. God did something with that sin. He left that sin in the grave. <clears throat> right so then you know the scripture says 
it, I think it's in Hebrews 1. It says, again, I say unto you, thou art my son. Again, mm -hmm. you, you see, he said it once, but mm -hmm. he said it again when he raised Christ from the dead. Thou art my son. Mm -hmm. This day have I begotten thee. Mm -hmm. That is when he begot him from the dead. Mm -hmm. But when he spoke to Jesus and he said, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. He was speaking to the whole human race in Christ. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, listen, if I'm not declared righteous, then Christ couldn't have raised from the dead. Right. The evidence that I am righteous is Christ raised from the dead. I mean, to a person that don't get it, that sounds blasphemous. How dare you? What do you think of yourself that you say that if you're not declared righteous, Christ couldn't have raised from the dead? I'm just speaking the truth. That's the reality of it. And well, this a lot of times that's because, again, the carnal mind wants us to see uh, us not as the value. The exactly. Same of God he wants to de it wants to devalue us and see you know how could how could God ever do that for something like you exactly <laughs> they don't understand the value you know in our in our father's eyes that the father's eyes towards us I mean he he is he's always thinking about us like, like we said the scripture you know when I consider the heavens you know who are you yeah. who are you that, are, that you are mindful of us I mean, God's mindful of us. He's always been mindful of us and always, but it's the carnal mind that devalues us. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, and you know, in, in um, Romans 6, 4, it says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father by the good opinion of the father right well we were all in him and when we were in him before his death because we were in him he had to die because we were dead mm -hmm. oh. okay and so because we were sinners he had to die Mm -hmm. But then when God declared him righteous, we all had to be uh, called righteous, declared righteous, because we were all in him. It's one for all and all for one. That's it, baby. And, you know, Paul said it like this in 1 Corinthians 15, 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. And ye are yet in your sins. Right. If Christ is not raised, well, you know why he wouldn't be raised? Mm. Because we were still in our sins. Yeah. But because he raised up is the evidence that we're not in our sins anymore. Otherwise, he couldn't have rose from the dead. Mm. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, they, they, uh, a lot of people don't understand that it's, you know, that um, our identity in Christ. In Adam, we were in Adam, now we're in Christ. And they, they view it, you know, almost like a, an individual, I guess, thing, separation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, what it say in Romans, in Romans 5, it talks about, um, is it Romans five? Through one man's obedience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even <clears throat> so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're, we're talking about, we're talking about, when we talk about this, we need to talk about, people want to talk about obedience, you know, everyone's different 
levels of obedience. But it says it was through one man's disobedience that sin came yeah. into the world and death began to reign over the whole world. But it's one, through one man, one man, one, one man. man's obedience yeah. that many were justified unto yeah. life. And, and that many. Yeah. Uh, that many is all. Oh, yeah. Okay, that, that's a stinky translation. Yeah. Well, because there goes. as by one man's disobedience, many? Mm. Wait a minute. All of sin didn't have come short of the glory of God. Right. <laughs> so that, is, you know, if, if, if by one man's disobedience, not everybody was made sinners. That's the only way that you can say, so by the obedience of one, many were made righteous, but not all. No, it's the same word. Yeah. So if you say, well, that it doesn't mean, it says many. That doesn't mean all are made righteous. Then you've got to say, well, I guess then all ain't sinners. Because it, it says many were made sinners. So if it's all for one, it's all for the other. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And the carnal mind doesn't want to, it does, it just yeah, messes. You got to nail it to the wall. <laughs> you know, really, you do. You've got to nail it down. Well, because it's just like I was saying too, you know, when Jesus, he, he came, he didn't, he never asked one person, you need to first ask for forgiveness before I can extend forgiveness. Oh. He said, your sins are forgiven. He declared right. it. Right. He declared it. And what gospel are we really declaring? Are we making it exactly. conditional right up front? Yes. You know, like you got to jump through some hoops first before yes. you can get this? Yeah. Or does the, does the scripture tell us to declare that you're forgiven? Absolutely. That you are Absolutely. forgiven. He Absolutely. says, preach the forgiveness of sins. He said, preach the forgiveness of sins. I think that's something that Phelan really drives home. Amen. The good news is you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Yeah. You are forgiven. That is the good news. And that, see, that message, the right message like that declared under the power of the Spirit is going to cause people to repent. It gives them that. Right. You are seeing what I saw that day that I came in and said, can I just say something? <laughs> You're seeing what I saw. Yeah. I, I just got to bless people. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. I was, I was so in the reality right. of the power of my words being able to bless Mm -hmm. and declare uh, that Jesus has forgiven your sins. Yeah. That I had to do it because who knows who's listening? You know what I mean? And I, I really, I really see that. Mm. That declaring what God says, you know, the scripture in Revelation that says that the, the spirit of Jesus. What is it? The testimony of Jesus mm -hmm. is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. The testimony of Jesus. What is the testimony of Jesus? I'm declared righteous. Amen. Okay? If I don't know, if I don't have the testimony of Jesus, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I do not have the true spirit of prophecy. Yeah. If I don't see that I'm righteous, God help whoever I prophesy to. Because <laughs> it's going to be yeah. bad news. Amen? Yeah. Because if you can't see your right, how can you see anybody else's right? Amen. Wow, that wound me up when, you know, a couple of weeks ago, that just kept rolling and rolling. The testimony of Jesus as the spirit of prophecy, they mm -hmm. overcame by the word of their testimony. What is that testimony? Well, I used to be a drunk. I used to be a drug addict, but now I'm not. No, that's not the testimony. The testimony that I have is God is pleased with me. Man. What does the scripture say in Hebrews 11? Boy, did I get wound up. 
<laughs> it's, that, it's that word of life. And that's, you know, when I said that, it's just like, you know, declaring, declaring people, you know, what has already been accomplished. Absolutely. What has already been done. You are forgiven. You have been made righteous. That is the message that people need to hear in order to grant them, to see them gifted with that gift of repentance Absolutely. so they can change their mind about God and about who they are. And when you see that you were created in the image of God mm -hmm. and the words of your mouth directed by the Spirit of God are as, just as powerful as when God said, when God declared, let there be light and there was light. That's what you are doing when you declare mm -hmm. to people their innocence. Mm -hmm. It's like a resonation on the inside. You know, it's going to reverberate on the inside because, listen, God is already at work in that person. God has already been speaking to that person. And you come and you declare they're righteous, that they are totally innocent, that their sins have been taken away. I mean, something on the inside, baby, just makes them happy. Hallelujah. We went down to Charleston yesterday and uh, took some of our uh, international students down there to Charles to see Charleston. And yeah. I met up with David Lynch while I was down there. <clears throat> and he walked into this, where we were at this restaurant, and he had this sh shirt on. God is not mad at me. God is not <laughs> mad at you. He's mad about you. You know, and when you see, he says he wears, that's his, that's all he wears anymore. Because every time people can't, number one, they can't help but look at that shirt. Because first Absolutely. of all, they're thinking that it's saying God is mad at me. Yes. Which, which is, is their conscience is flooded with that mindset. Yes. And so is the world. Okay. Flooding them with that mindset. So when they say God is not mad at you, he's mad about you. It's just like, it causes, it's the message. It's the same thing we're talking about, but I, I had this word that came out of me to him. I said, you know what that shirt is causing people to do? Repent. Yes, absolutely. Change their mind about God. Changing their mind, that's it. <laughs> they have been inundated with religion. And, you know, as I said a few weeks ago, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Yep. The gospel is the power. It's the good declaring the goodness of God, which leads people to repent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And so the world and religion all have the same message. Mm -hmm. God's mad at you. You're a dirt bag. And unless you repent, <laughs> you're going to hell. Okay. Well, if a, per, if a preacher gets up in church and preaches a message that has the finger pointed to the person and mm. tells them that what they've got to do to get right with God, and then they turn around to you and command you to repent, they have to command you to repent because there's no power in the message that they preach that would cause you to repent. Because it's the repent. same thing they already believe. Tell right. me something I don't know. <laughs> me God is good. Persuade my heart that God is good, and that will cause me to repent. Exactly. Now, That's back awesome. to the testimony yeah. of, of Jesus is mm. the spirit of prophecy. In Hebrews 11, it says, verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was found not because God had translated him for or because before his translation, he had this testimony mm -hmm. that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. That's the testimony of Jesus, that we please God. And then it says, and I love how Matt Moore brought this out. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe he is. He is what? Mm -hmm. You've got to believe 
that you're pleasing to God. Mm. It's not talking about what God is. It's talking about what you are. Mm. You've got to believe that you're pleasing to God and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Right. Now, that, that word right there, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now let's hook that up with Romans 8. Oh, this is so juicy. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 8. The Romans 8, 8. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Mm, mm, mm. Only faith pleases God. Mm -hmm. Only believing what God believes can God be pleased. And we say, we say, like I said, what, what God believed about Jesus, what God believes about Jesus, he believes about you. Absolutely. That's the testimony of Jesus. That's the testimony of Jesus, as he is so are we in this world. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's good. Why? Because if you're in the flesh, you cannot receive the testimony of Jesus. Well, if you're in the flesh, but, you're not believing what God believes. No, you are walking according to um, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You judge yourself according to your behavior. Yeah. Therefore, you cannot receive the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's just too much for me to believe. Yeah. Only the spirit of God can convince you of what God's convinced of. You can't see. You can't. Yeah. It's nope. not believing, and it's not believing the report. He says, "Who whose report will you believe?" Right. And, and you know, if you read that, if you mm -hmm. read that in the Septuagint, it's gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's gospel. Wow. Yeah. Which gospel shall you believe? That's it. That ties in with that. That's the report. That's it. Yep. And, so when you're walking in the flesh. He says, those who, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So right. if you're right. walking after the spirit, you're believing the report of the Lord. Amen. You're, let's go you're, back. Repeating, you're reporting, believing the gospel, and you're walking in the flesh. You're not believing the gospel, that you are completing Christ, right? Right. And the, that, that um, I always like to go back to that. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus who yeah. walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That condemnation, people, people use that scripture when they do something that they think is wrong. And then they go, right. well, there's no condemnation. But that's not what it's referring to. Remember what Jesus said in John 3. Let me turn there. Mm -hmm. It's so important that people. Well, be, and let me, while you're turning there, it's because what happens if you don't have the proper understanding of what that is saying, then you're going to be uh, living what we say it, by Christian cliches. Yes, exactly. No condemnation for those in Christ. No condemnation for those. Exactly. And you know what they're doing when they do that? It just shows you where they are Amen. because they're piecemealing it. They're piecemealing it. They're looking at their wrong behavior and saying, well, I don't have any condemnation for this, but you're missing the whole thing. There's a whole big ball of wax you're missing. And that is, in, it says in 3.16, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Mm -hmm. What are they condemned to? 
Right. They're, they're condemned to a life of knowing themselves after the flesh. Yeah. Nah. So, but when we see Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation. Paul is saying, I am not condemned to a life of knowing myself after my behavior. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so I don't, I don't ever, if I do something, I think it, it wasn't right. I never say, well, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because I'm not condemned to that life. Right. You understand what I'm saying? If you're saying it, if you're saying, oh, well, there's no condemnation. It's because you don't know that you're not living in any condemnation at all. God doesn't know me according to the flesh. Yeah. You don't so have if he to. doesn't know me according to the flesh, and I don't know myself according to the flesh, I wouldn't even bring it up. Well, you're parroting, you're you're beginning to parrot things and live yeah. by preaching. What the, the Holy Spirit has taken us to a different level of understanding. Yeah. And one thing he's he's really been showing me is that we have we have received, and it hasn't been all bad because it's brought much relief to a lot of people under a lot of legal legalism, but we have believed. A lot of times a message that has brought us relief but has not filled us with the fullness of his life right yeah you know and it's really coming into proper understanding and not just quoting you know uh christian cliches which can bring you some relief okay but it's almost like a self-relief then yeah you know and you know, it's like there's a real peace and a real life fullness of life and peace the kingdom of god that, that God wants to release in us and through yeah. us, but it will come through as, as the Holy Spirit renews our mind to the truths of what we're talking about here. Yeah. I think that Paul so radically preached the gospel of grace because Paul was such a radical Pharisee. Yeah. And so to the, to the degree... Mm -hmm. that you were entrenched in legalism is the degree you're going to come out and be entrenched in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I think why it, this really resonates to me is because I was such a perfectionist. I was going to say, that's why you're so radical. <laughs> everything right. And if I just said the wrong word to my husband, I was under such condemnation. And it was a daily grind, you know, a daily, it was just so rotten. <laughs> so when I saw what Christ really did, that he took me out from being condemned to knowing myself after the flesh, I never look at something that, you know, flies out of me that isn't, you know, right. good. I always, I always say that, that scripture and go, oh, there's no condemnation. I mean, good night, nurse. I know I'm not condemned to that life. Right. And that's what, that? that's what it's really been. There was, there's something been bothering me in my spirit about, you know, especially a lot of people that are in grace, under the grace message there's 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 a lot of uh, just you know there's a lot of chain uh, quoting and parroting but there's not a lot of you know right. what I'm saying? a lot of, not a lot of fruit mm -hmm. that's being manifest mm -hmm. okay yeah. and it's just like i think that's where we're getting all our wacky stuff going mm -hmm. on because they still haven't gotten a hold yeah. of the, the right mess of the truth of the right message yeah. of our life and our life is in christ and we Absolutely. know ourselves not according to the flesh but according to christ christ is my life that's the that's the thing that you i felt the spirit keeps telling me to to say you know not as a parroting thing but as yeah. as as speaking like you said i bless you you are forgiven yes christ is your life because you know is the power life. of the words that you're speaking because mm -hmm. you are in agreement you, homo logeo you are confessing homo logeo yeah. is to say the same thing as christ said mm -hmm. you are in union with him 
And that's why Paul said, we are ambassadors in Christ stead as though God did beseech you through us. He yeah. realized the power of his yeah. words. Yes. Yes. I was going to say, I'm sure glad I wasn't in your church back in those days. Oh, amen. <laughs> but damn it, she, she survived. She survived. She's still here. <laughs> Glory. But you know what? I was in the same place. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I could drive people to the altar. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I remember the first mass grace message that I preached when uh, Mike and Carrie were home at Christmas. And they were, you know, over there in Andrew Womack's ministry. And uh, mm. I remember afterward, Carrie saying to me, she says, you know something? She says, now you're preaching this. You're going to see people who have seemingly lived holy lives. Now they're going to come out with all manner of bad fruit. Because mm. now they realize that there's they god's not judging them mm -hmm. and so you're going to go to a period where people are going to be wacky because yeah. they come out but they haven't gone in well i've got a god gave me a good picture of that it's like a dog that's been on a leash yeah you know and the dog the only reason the dog doesn't run wild was because the leash exactly <laughs> take the leash off mm -hmm. and what's in the heart of the dog I mean, he just cuts loose. He cuts yes, loose he and he does. goes crazy. But eventually he comes back because he knows the master's love for him. Yeah. And know what constrains him is not the leash, but it's the love of God. It's That's the love it. of God That's that it. constrains us. Yeah. You know, it's like I said, so, I said so, to someone yesterday, I think it was David yesterday. I said, you know what? People used to come up and say, are you saying that you grace people can do anything you want? And we used to say, oh, no, no, no. And then the Lord stops, stops you and say, you know what? Yeah, we can do anything <laughs> yeah. we want because God changes our wants. Yep. <laughs> God changes our desires through the grace of the Lord. You know, so we do, I do whatever I want. Amen. You know? But, you know, a lot of things I used to want to do, I don't want to do them anymore because there's no life in those things. There's only death. The true life is in Christ. Christ is the life. Yeah. So the lust of the flesh is really uh, someone that still hasn't come into revelation of where That's the right. true life is. And they're still yeah. lusting. They're still looking for love mm -hmm. and life in all their own places. Satisfaction. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's only found in Christ. Jan? He gives us the desires of our heart. And our heart has been renewed. We've got a brand new heart. Brand new That's heart. right. Absolutely. You know, I'll tell you, before, way before I ever came into the grace of God, mm -hmm. the Lord really, I always had love in my heart. I always had a deep love in my heart for people. Even when I was the biggest legalist, I loved people. And this scripture was one of my real strong scriptures in romans 14 19 it says let us therefore follow after things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another for me destroy not the work of god all things indeed are pure but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense or a stumbling block it is good neither to eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Mm. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself from God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing mm. that he alloweth. And mm. I find that there is a great disconsideration mm -hmm. for people that are weak mm -hmm. and i find people flaunting their liberty yeah. and by doing so causing others that are weak to fall mm -hmm. i've mm -hmm. seen it and yeah. you know it is like hey 
you know, do it to yourself and God. You know, if you do something, you feel you've got the liberty to do something, but you see a brother that really has a problem in that area, don't tempt the poor guy. You know, I remember years ago, um, a fella that I really looked up to and um, I had stopped watching because I love cop movies. Mm -hmm. I love cop movies. I love this <laughs> movie. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking that. And there was a time where I stopped. I stopped watching television because I just wanted to totally focus on the Lord. Yeah. And I said to this man, who I really esteem as something. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I stopped watching cop movies. And he's like, oh, oh, I love my cop movies. Mm. Well, guess what? I thought, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Mm. You know what just came to my mind when I said that? What Jesus said to Peter. Yeah. When he told <laughs> Peter, <laughs> he was going to stretch forth his arms and die. Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah, but what about that one? What about this guy? Yeah, what about John? What about him? How's he going to die? <laughs> it's like, what's he doing? <laughs> you know, it's none of your business. You follow me. None and that's business. it right there. You know, when you put somebody up on a pedestal and, you, and they say, well, there's nothing the matter with this. You know what? It might not be no big deal for him. He might not be a, I mean, what the way I am is whatever I do, baby, I do big. Yeah. So maybe he had a cop movie <laughs> this week. Yeah. That I might binge all day and night. Yeah. You know, so. Well, Lord, it's that personal work. You know, it's That's being right. governed by the spirit and That's the Lord right. knows us and, uh, you know, he just wants, listen, he just wants us to experience the fullness of his life, you know, That's and right. he doesn't want yeah. us to, uh, you know, I see a lot of it. And it's, again, it's, and you can't, and then again, like you said, you cannot, what the Lord has instructed and, and shown you, and you don't then make it a law for everyone else. No. You don't tell everyone to throw out their TVs. It's, you know, the one-eyed devil. <laughs> <laughs> Done that. Oh, yeah. You're laughing with me. <laughs> so. Yeah. The what I devil. Yeah. Oh, I remember us taking out our TVs in the backyard. <laughs> taking an axe to them. That's funny. Yeah. You know, the thing is, what did what the, what's the scripture say the, about uh, Israel in, in Romans 10? That Israel had a great zeal for God, yeah. but not according to knowledge, for they went about seeking their own righteousness yeah. and not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God, which comes by faith. Wow. We were trying, man. I mean, we were. I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Glory to God. Well, I was thinking of that one scripture in Galatians five thirteen, where it says, uh, "You've been called to liberty, brethren. Yeah. Only don't use your liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, serve one another." Yeah. Yeah, you can you know you can look at that in different ways as well. But uh, but I like that word about you you saying that you know really if you're if you're flaunting you know these these things in front of people and say there's no condemnation yeah. I can do what I want to do and you're not considering other people that's yeah. not the heart of the father that's not no, the heart. that's not love no that's selfishness yeah and um yeah I think. You know, it's an upside down kingdom. The kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom. Jesus said, you know, the greatest among you will be everybody's servant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the more that the love of Christ constrains your heart, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. the more you don't live for yourself, but you live, mm -hmm. you know, to help people. You know, it's uh, everything you do, you consider people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even if you want to do something, if you want to do something and you really want to do it, but that you know you're with somebody that, you know, would take it the wrong way, you don't do it. Yeah. You just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Even though you know there's nothing the matter with it. It's just like years ago when we had people in our church that, um, you know, were real legalistic as far as dietary laws. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't serve somebody pork. All right. I mean, I wouldn't invite somebody to my house and say, oh, I made a lovely pork roast. <laughs> I expect them to eat it. Well, God is cleansed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, it says don't do it for conscience sake. Yeah. Not your conscience, their conscience. Yeah, that's because good. Because if they think it's wrong, listen to me. <clears throat> if I'm teaching somebody and they have, I have their ear, okay? Right. And then I invite them to my house and put pork before them. They're going to think I'm acting like a heathen. I just lost their ear. Right. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. You know what I mean? You just you lost their ear. That's, that's a good word. You just lost their ear. Mm -hmm. You just lost their ear. You do something that is an offense to them. They no longer respect you to hear you. Yeah, that's a good word. I was thinking, you know, when Peter Port pulled out his sword, you know, because they came to arrest Jesus, and what did he do? He cut off, he cut off someone's ears, right? Yes. The mm. servant of the yes. ear. And see, that's that that arm of the flesh. That's you know, right. If you do things out of the flesh, you're yeah. gonna wind up cutting someone's ear off. Exactly. And Jesus, the Jesus thing comes back and restores the ear, right? Yeah. But we have to be careful of that. That's a, a great word, you know, that you're you know, that you're losing people's ear to hear the gospel, yeah. which is exactly. the power of God to change your For life. What? Yeah. For what? So you can just do your own thing? You can flaunt whatever you're... Yeah. You're How to ridiculous. Yeah. It says... What does it say? Don't offend someone who Christ died for. Yeah. Christ died for them. Mm. And you're not considering it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great word. Yeah. Anyone, do you have anything? Anybody? Stephanie or Anita? Jan? I'm just taking it in. <laughs> taking it in? Yeah. Hey, there's been a lot of good work coming out of this. Wow. Yes. Awesome. I've just been writing things down as fast as I can write them. Yeah. Down. After I get through writing, I go back to look at it and I said, I can't even read this. <laughs> It's like, what is this? It's like shorthanders, my own shorthanders. <laughs> it's terrible. But uh, you get it so excited. You know, I remember once someone said, one time they said, the weakest ink is better than the strongest memory. <laughs> but still, the word is still going in. You know, it's still, it's still there and it's still stirring and still working in us to do what the word does. The power of the word, right? So it's not just up to our ability to remember. The I word. found that scripture. Yeah. The it word says, of God is powerful. Yeah. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Romans 14, 14. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus yeah. that there is nothing unclean of itself. Mm. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Mm. But if thy brother be grieved with yeah. thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably. You're not walking in love. If you're eating something that offends them, he says, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Yeah, that's a great scripture. That is just like, 
where, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm doing? walking in a way that I know offends my brother. Mm -hmm. How in the world am I going to get him over to my way of thinking? Yeah. What does the scripture say? An offended brother is harder to win than an armed city. Amen. Mm -hmm. Don't offend. Wow, that's a good word. That's a good word. Flesh is flesh <laughs> and spirit, spirit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And when you want to flaunt your own way, that's not spirit. Flaunt your liberty. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot. I think we're touching on a lot of different things uh, that's going on, you know, of course. But uh, it's so important for us to hear these things because it really does, you know, deal with that carnal mind that always wants to rise up and, and uh, you know, behave in a way, cause us to, you know, move in a way that is not beneficial at all. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's really about love and that God values and loves everybody. It doesn't matter where they're at. You know, that's right. And God, our prayer is God help us to see what you see, you know, yeah. And, uh, through all the stuff. And that's not always easy, right? It's not always easy. I mean, I, I find myself, my carnal mind wants to, like Andrew says, the spirit of slap <laughs> a lot of times, you know, it's actually the, the carnal mind. <laughs> slap people you know because it's easier sometimes to, to just slap them than to love them <laughs> <laughs> but, but, so but it's the gospel it's where but, people you are. know for, romans 14 is really a huge uh thing on this subject listen yeah. to this one mm -hmm. uh romans 14 1 him that is weak in the faith yeah. receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, mm -hmm. another who is weak will only eat herbs. Right. Now look at this. He that is weak in the faith, he's only got the faith to eat vegetables. And yet, those people think they're strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they are using self discipline to stay mm -hmm. away. But he says, there's nothing in unclean in itself. Can you believe that? Mm. Or are we going to go by the knowledge of good and evil? Right. I mean, look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, I give you power so that you can drink any deadly thing unaware and it ain't going to hurt you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And believe you me, we really need faith these days to eat. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the truth. You better pray over your food. <laughs> and and everything. Trusting God. You know, in uh, Romans 15, it says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak mm -hmm. and not please ourselves. I mean, it just said, he that has, there's nothing unclean in itself. And some people have the faith to eat anything, drink anything. But that's not the, we're not to live unto ourselves. Mm -hmm. It says, let every one of us please his neighbor. And you hear people say, what am I, my brother's keeper? <laughs> yeah. That's what the scripture says. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification for mm -hmm. even Christ. Please not himself. Yeah. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. 
Oh, thank God Jesus didn't live for himself. Amen. If he did, he never would have died for us and we'd be up the creek. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. hallelujah. Awesome words. That's to been be good. with Christ, to be with Christ, to be Christ is to be filled with the same love that caused Jesus to go to that cross. Mm -hmm. Wow, stop and think of that. Mm. Mm. You mean to say I can't eat lobster in front of my friend? That just doesn't seem right. Oh, please. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, the family that, one of the families that came to our church for so many years, mm -hmm. they were totally under the, re, the Hebrew Diet. dietary laws. Mm. Oh, every time they come to my house, I have to, you know, do for them. And when I preach the gospel of grace in the power of God, that brother came up to me and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and get me a ham and chomp <laughs> That's what happened. Awesome. He was set free. Message number one, the grace of God. He's I'm like, sister, I'm going out and get me a ham oh. and I'm going to eat that sucker. I'm free. But if you if you would have uh, if he would have before that come over to your house and there was a, a full pig with an apple in it. Exactly. You know what? He would have come back to church and lost him. I'd have lost his ear and he never would have been mad to hear the day that Jesus Christ set me free. Don't because lose even though I had the liberty to, to eat pork and eat lobster, I was still in bondage. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. <laughs> wow, this has been great. This yeah, been just great. think of just think of the reward of you know laying your life down for your brother. Yeah. And seeing them coming into the gospel of grace, into this true uh freedom, this liberty. You know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. That's the yes, that's been good. Wisdom of God and the power of God, the Holy Spirit showing us, you know, all these Amen. things. Amen. And he he's given oh, us his heart. He's given us his heart too, to, you know. Yes. To, Amen. So it's yes. not just coming out of some kind of, well, I need to do these things. Oh, no. But no, it's, it's not. Hey, what does he say? He says, if I have the faith to move mountains and mm -hmm. give my body to be burned, mm -hmm. you know, what is it profit if mm -hmm. you don't have love? Yeah. If I give all my earthly goods to the mm. poor, yeah. What's it good? What? I mean, listen. If it ain't love, what's it for? Amen. Mm -hmm. People do it. People will give millions to mm -hmm. have to build a wing of a hospital mm -hmm. and have their yeah. name put up there. Yeah. So if it wasn't for love, what was it for? I'll tell you. Vain glory. Mm -hmm. yeah, vain glory. Vain glory. <laughs> vain glory. Yeah. So, yeah, if it's, you know, if it ain't love, it ain't going to do you any good. And yeah, and it ain't going to do anybody else any good. If it's just legalism, you know, mm. oh, well, then I better do this. I don't know. No, let's get our heart. Let's get our heart filled with the love of God and yeah. let everything we do be out of. The love of God. Yeah. You know, when we hear in, in Romans 5 5, it says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. Well, let me show you something. It's not the Holy Ghost pouring love into us, it's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Poured exactly. into our heart. It's yeah. the Spirit of God which is the spirit of love. I used to think the Holy Ghost was pouring love into my heart. No, yeah. the Holy Ghost is love. Yeah, well, we have that, that mind of separation instead of union. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. Living from a place of separation, you're going to come up with all kinds of twisted ideas and theology, you know, about how God's standing at a distance. 
you know, dropping things on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, he gave us his fullness, didn't he? I mean, he moved in. He God moved in, you know. And so. Yes. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> God moved. <in. laughs> you know, sometimes it's so funny because me and Jan will call each other and we'll go. Now this is going to sound stupid. And it could be something that we've said over and over and over. And yeah, it was a rhema word. You know, like a couple of weeks ago when I heard Emmanuel. And I went, wow, God <laughs> is with me. He's with me. I mean, it was just like, yeah, hello. We <laughs> but it was just the it was just such a Amen. Wow, God, the God pickling. is with me. Yeah. And then you get this. Well, if God be for me, who can be against me? I mean, I've got it going on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, last week I was telling you guys how I used to be so self-conscious and I had such an inferiority complex. It's hard to believe. Isn't it hard to believe? <laughs> I mean, I look at myself and I go, man, woman, you act like a total maniac. How in the world could you ever? But that's what <laughs> Christ will do for you. Right. When you realize, when you get a hold of God's good view and opinion of you. That's right. That's I mean, right. that's what makes the righteous as bold as a lion. That's right. Who that's cares right. what anybody thinks? Yeah. I mean, I got God saying I'm great. Yeah. What difference does it make what you think? You think I'm a little <laughs> nuts? That's okay. <laughs> I should be different from the world. Amen. I'm an alien to this world. I'm an alien. I'm a, I'm a bad <laughs> people. I love I'm it. A I bad love people. it. I've got Jesus <laughs> on my side. Of I love just to let you know. I love how God communicates the His love through you. Yes. <laughs> a blessing to many, many people. Well, praise the living God. Amen. And, you know, I mean, and for each of you. And each of us have our own, you know. Uh, we're totally different. You know, we're all different. You know, yeah. God's a God of variety. Just look at the flowers and the trees. And, you know, mm -hmm. So everything's got its own, you know, sometimes they look very similar, but they're all different. Yes. Everyone. So we're going to go ahead and close out this. Does anyone have any last closing thoughts this has been rich i've, I've enjoyed it hey, me <laughs> too <laughs> yeah yeah amen anybody need prayer for anything me always <laughs> thank you lord and joe james joe said she wouldn't be able to come this morning she had a five-hour trip to the doctors so we're praying now for her blood pressure yes and um, Linda starts her chemo. Um, this is where well, she started at 10 o'clock this morning. So, okay. Is she in Charleston or here? No, or? she's here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Linda. Okay. Joe and Steph. Anybody <laughs> else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love, Father. Thank, Thank you for you, the body. Thank you for Joe. Just continue to. Manifest your healing in her and Linda yeah. and Stephanie. Just bring incredible mm -hmm. encouragement to her heart and to her mind. Lord God, let your kingdom reign and rule in her life, Father. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for this word of life that you, you bring to us by the power of the Holy Spirit for new, renewing our minds to the truth that we might be filled with the fullness of life, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We treasure your word above anything else in this Thank life. You, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. It's been great. Yes. Yes. Have a Keeps day. getting better. Keeps getting better. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm what time little... do you guys start? 10. 10 o'clock. At East 10. Time. Okay. Okay. Because I'm like, I keep hopping right in the middle of her saying something. <laughs> Our service, <laughs> our service starts at 1030. Well, the Zoom, I mean, not the Zoom, but Facebook Live is 11 o'clock, usually at 11 o'clock. Yeah, Sunday, Eastern Zoom time. is 10. Zoom 10 o'clock. 
10 o'clock. Okay. I'm going to get this uh, on online uh, as soon as possible because yeah. people out there need to hear this. Yes. And yes. Word. Thank you, Lord. Let it happen in Jesus' name. Bless you guys. Amen. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.